We got a D28 here, and what year is this? 09, 99? It's a 99, I think. It was in one of my triage videos recently, and the issue that we had here was that during a certain period of time, Martin, how do I say this? Martin puts the bridge on top of the finish, okay? So when they put the bridge on right here, they finish the entire guitar, then they cut a hole, not a hole, they scrape the finish away in a spot that is smaller than the footprint of the guitar. Then they slap the bridge on there. This results in a very clean line right here because the finish is going under the bridge. So this is your bridge. Let me get a bridge. Here's your bridge. Okay? And it's sitting on top of the finish. Here's your finish. So it sits in this. So there's a very clean line right here because the finish actually goes underneath that thing. However, if this is the finish, and let's say it's uh, six thousandths, eight thousandths of an inch thick, and this is the top right here. I need another piece of wood. <laughs> let's go with this, okay? You know what? There's a piece of top. There's actually a piece of spruce. This is our top. Here's our finish. Let's get a piece of finish. This is a guitar finish. This is a guitar top. The finish goes on top of the top, right? So it's a certain thickness. The bridge goes on top of that, like this. What do you see? A gap. See? There's going to be a gap between the bridge and the top, the actual wood top, that's as thick as the finish is. So if this finish... Six thousandths, eight thousandths of an inch thick, and it goes on top of the top wood, and then the bridge goes on top of that. It does not take a rocket scientist to see that there's a gap out there, and that the bridge is not being glued directly to the top, as it would be the case like this. Okay, that means your glue has got to fill a gap, and wood glues as used on Martin guitars, don't fill gaps very good. Plus, the finish is not, or the glue, I'm sorry, is not going to stick on the finish. So here's the finish again. And remember, you got it like this. That glue is not going to stick to the finish because that's not what it's designed to do. It's designed to stick to wood. And the way glues work, glues are adhesive. I can't remember which one's rich, okay? But there's a difference between a glue and an adhesive, okay? One or the other, uh, but certainly wood glues. <laughs> that was cute. One or the other requires an oxidation bond. And that's why it's important when you're gluing something down with tight bond, um, PVA glue, any of those glues like that it's important to scrape that off with a razor blade just gently you know you're, you're scraping the oxidation layer off of that you scrape it off of here and then you put the glue on there and you stick it together and you will get a so much better bond if you don't do that it'll probably still stick because glue is fairly forgiving but if you do it take that oxidation you'll get a so much better bond um, you have to go Google this because I can't remember which one it is, whether it's the glue or the adhesive. Um, one or the other, they, they act differently, okay? So that's all I'm going to I'm going to shut up on this. But I do know, you know everything that I use, the hide glues, um, the luthier's mercantile instrument glue, I don't use tight bond variants very often, but luthier's mercantile is the same class of glue, okay? It's a PVA kind of glue. It just dries differently. It has different properties. Um, epoxy is different. Epoxy is the other one. Epoxy is a chemical reaction and acts differently. Okay? So, all right, that's our problem. Is that the bridge is sitting up on a layer of finish. So, what we're going to do is we're going to remove this bridge. We're going to scrape away the layer of finish like Martin maybe should have done in the first place. Like they used to do back in the day. And then we're going to glue the bridge to the wood. Now, different people have different approaches to this. Um, Collings, for instance, rubs the finish under there. But they 
inch at the edge of their bridge right here. So their bridge is not flat like this. It actually has a little lip cut right here. A very, very precise lip. And then they cut the hole in the finish very, very precisely to match that hole. And when you take a Collings bridge across the finish, it goes click. And it clicks down into that spot and it doesn't move. Um, they are insanely precise. Mario Pru did that on one of the guitars I worked off and it was a pain in the butt because <laughs> I had to fix it. I had to make a new bridge and I don't have the router set up anymore to route that little lip in there. So I had to do it by hand with a razor blade, you know, and scrape it and not as precise as it would have been from the get-go. When you do this in a manufacturing situation, you've got a little router thing set up or a CNC machine, and it cuts a precise, repeatable lip around that thing. So, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, you know, they're, they're cool. I mean, it's a cool piece of engineering and everything, but they're, they're, I don't like repairing them. When I do a Collings bridge, I, um, I call up Collings and I ask them for a bridge. Um, they, they're great about getting me a bridge, you know. So, God bless them. Um, that's why I have a picture of Bill Collins up here, you know, on my bench. So, that's what we're going to do this morning. Now, it's going to be a little tricky for me to film because I have to use my main bench right here. Um, there's no place for a camera on it. So, I'm going to have to kind of work a little bit, and then I'm going to show you the work, and then we're going to go on. So, the first thing I did on this bridge was get my all scratch all and I scored around the edge of the bridge like this and put that all up in like this up in the tip get that tip up there and you score around the bridge and make a score mark so that when I pull the bridge off I'm going to see where to take the finish off um, and yes you're going to have a little bit of a line right there where you can see you know the glue it bothers some people and that's why Martin does it this way because it's faster in their manufacturing thing of making 100,000 guitars a year um, to a lot of guitars. I understand it saves them a lot of time on that. You know, Collins doesn't put out that kind of number. That's their that's their ball game. You know, they're a smaller volume, more precise. Um, that's the niche they've chosen, which is great, you know. Um, but I know Martin does that, so the consumers look at that and they see that nice flush line. And I don't care. Um, because I understand how bridges and tops work. It doesn't bother me a bit to see a little bit of that glue line going around there. Because that's what I'm used to on vintage guitars. Um, back in the day, they did it just like this. Put the bridge on, score, take the finish off. And you'd have a little bit of a glue line around there if you looked really super close. Okay? So, you know, that's the comp one. That's the deal we're going to make here. That bridge needs to sit on the wood. And I know it needs to sit on the wood because I showed you this in the triage is at the corner here. Um, I gotta get thinner filler gauge. It's not loose, but the corner is not making contact with the top. So the bridge is on, and the bridge isn't even making contact with the top. There's a glue layer in between there. And you're not getting the best sound you can get out of this guitar. The owner wants the best sound he can get out of it. I'm gonna get into the best sound. Here's 003 filler gauge. And, and it pokes in there quite a bit. See that? And again, that's it. I mean, it stops. The bridge isn't loose, but that's how much finish there is around this thing. And you can see that. I mean, it's going in. Look at the curve on the feeler gauge there. It's going in clear to that curve. That curve is gone. So we've got at least that much finish. All right. So I'm going to take the bridge off and then I'm going to show you a picture of it. Here's how I'm going to take the bridge off and then I'm going to cut while I actually do the work. I've got these shields here. They've been in other videos, lots of videos. They're cardboard covered with aluminum foil. They fit pretty precisely over the bridge. Then I've got the secondary shields which go up here so that I can further insulate the top. And I'm going to do that. Double shields on it. I've got my little chain here that I stole from a kid's nursery one time. They didn't let me back in after that, but, you know, I got my chain, okay? 
<laughs> heat lamp. This is nothing but a poultry breeder lamp. It's been in lots of my videos. That's a 250-watt deal. And yeah, I have electric blankets and I have all that kind of thing. Uh, I don't like them because they take so much more setup and then you got to have the box. And they just really don't distribute the heat as evenly as this heat lamp does. Heat lamp goes through all the little crevices and curves and gets it pretty good. I'm going to crank it up, turn it on, and I'm going to take the bridge off. I have another video of me taking bridges off, so I'm not going to show us that. But basically, I heat this like this for a while. <laughs> you know, a couple minutes, five minutes, whatever it takes. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to watch it. It's going to smoke a little bit when it gets hot. Um, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to take the shields off and I'm going to take a look at the top, make sure it's not getting too hot. Being that these are cardboard, they tend to hold a little bit moisture sometimes. And the heat lamp will push that moisture out. I don't want to damage the top. I don't want to steam the top. I'm going to heat it just a little bit like this. Then I'm going to check it. I also am heating like half of the bridge. I'm heating the base side right now. And I will move the guitar like this after a bit. You know, heat the treble side. And that's how I get even heating over the bridge. I just move the thing back and forth every so often. Um, this is my standard way of taking bridges off. You got to have a little bit of an advantage on this one because the bridge is sitting up on top of the finish, so it's not glued to the wood very good at all. Um, you almost never get wood tear out or anything like that. Some people chisel them off coals. I don't like to do that. I like to heat it a little bit, you know. It softens the glue up and helps break the bond on it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to sit here and watch it. Um... If I have a mandolin or something in the shop, I usually play mandolin and play a tune or two, but I don't have one in here, so I sit here and we just talk about this for a minute. So, so I do. You know, back and forth a little bit. I'm going to cut the camera now and we'll come back to this in a minute. Okay? A bridge is about ready to come off. Actually, it is off, but I'm going to show you how it comes off. The way I take bridges off, uh, I got other videos on this. I use a one inch chisel. A uh, hammer, get that bridge nice and warm. I put this chisel right up against this, tap it. Go both sides, go to the front after a minute, tap it. You'll see it start to rise, and then you can actually just kind of pull it up like this. It comes off in the hand. I don't like to use a spatula. Let's get a spatula. Here's a spatula. I don't like to use a spatula for this. You know, some people will put a spatula like that. I have found that it can crease the finish um, more so than using the chisel. The chisel you can get right up at that at that junction between the glue and the, I'm sorry, between the bridge and the top, and you can tap it right in there, and it immediately starts moving. Your chisel goes in there, and I just have better luck using a chisel here and taps it in there um, this bevel here at the end of the chisel will automatically push the bridge up like that and you can get it off like that pretty clean that's untouched you can see on this bridge right here where the finish is and where the bridge is and you can see this line right here this clear line running around here that's where the finish was this is the glue right here so you can see that the glue footprint um, is quite a bit smaller than the footprint of the bridge. You're losing eighth of an inch all the way around on this. And this is not that bad. I've seen some that go quarter of an inch. I mean, it varies a lot. So there's our bridge. It's off. Here's the top of the guitar. That's what it looks like. And again, you can see the line of finish right there. And you can see my score mark. And that's how much finish is under that bridge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that finish. The way I do that, I got this chisel. And I like this chisel for one thing because I sanded the wood off so it's flush like this. But this particular one model of chisel has a very steep angle right here. And I just find that that's really good for getting in there. And what I do is just scrape the finish off. 
I've used a lot of different techniques. I've used razor blades and I've tried sanding. I've tried a lot of different ways and this just is the one that usually works the best for me. If you use a solvent, yeah, yeah, it gets it off all right. But if you get that solvent on the top, you're in trouble. So the way I take this finish off is I get my chisel up here. I got to move over here. And hopefully I don't block the camera too bad. But what I do is put that chisel right up there and then just carefully scrape the finish off, okay? Not a big deal. It comes off real easy. Now, I'm going to get a pick. I'm going to get some of it and then I'll show you. <laughs> There's a lot of finish right there. All right. So this is a slow, tedious part of the deal. I'm not going to show this too much on the camera. Let me move the camera and see if I can get just a little bit better angle on this. Okay, let's see if we can get this. Re I need to mount this thing off the ceiling or something, but I haven't got around to doing that. So I just put my chisel up like this. Put my fingers in the way, of course. Yeah, we can't quite get this. Let's see if I can get it up here on this side. Up like that. There you go. You can see it. And get that chisel right up under that finish. And just gently push it up. And then you can see how it kind of feathers up like that. And then what I do is take it this way. Come a lot of different angle and then just scrape it right off. Okay. And it's got these little nubs here, which are full of glue. Got to get those off. Once I get all that finish off, what I would then do is take a piece of razor blade like this. This is a broken off razor blade. I put them in the vise and I use this as a scraper because I told you that the glue needs, or the wood needs to be scraped. And I just take this. Find the wood grain and scrape. And I'm not taking any of the um, wood off. I'm just trying to scrape the glue. Um, another trick that I can use, and I do this fairly frequently, use this. De-glue de goo. And you can put that up here this let it sit I probably need to shake it up this will dissolve water-based glues does a pretty good job you gotta let it sit for several minutes it does a real good job of getting rid of that stuff just smear it on there just mix this in guys get together mix it up in here that let me get that between the pinholes that's shit I'm gonna drop a paper towel in there and take a paper towel and I'm gonna push it in here catch any drippings that come off shouldn't be too bad yep I got a paper towel in there so if any of that drips through there I'm gonna catch it I'm going to let that soak, and then I'm going to work on this finish for a little bit, and we'll come back. All right. <laughs> Here's the bridge. I've got it all nice and cleaned up. And got the old glue off of it. Here's the top of this guitar now. I've got it all cleaned up. So, I use my uh, razor blade to scrape it. I use the razor blade to scrape the bridge again, you know, like this. Just scrape it across like this. Before I glue this on, set it on there. Get a couple of bridge pins. Pop them in there, like that. Like that. Put that bridge where it needs to be. Take my feeler gauge and put a little pressure on this. Just to simulate clapping and check the fit. And see right here? Feeler gauge is going, you can't see it, but I'm going to tell you, feeler gauge is going under here too easy. 
Back over here on the back, it's sticking really nice. It's not going in very easy. Even so, this bridge is not sitting really flat on the top. It's still got a little bit. How much pressure is it going to take? Now, nah, shut that down. Okay? Can't get the feeler gauge under here. So I'm trying to probe it here, and I'm putting a little bit more pressure on that top now, and that's stopping it. Still got a gap right there that I don't like. It's got a gap right here. Right here on this shoulder. And you can see that in spite of the fact that I've been sh um, shaving on this and everything, there's still it's a clear spot right here. So I've got a glue line or something. One thing I do to test out is get my nice straight edge, lay it across there, hold it up to the light like this, and then look at it and see what's going on. And I can see that, yeah, there's definitely a gap back there. Now, glue would fill that, but the whole point of this is to avoid that. We want a better fit. So I'm going to come back in with my razor blade here. I'm going to set this right here on the top so that you can see. I would normally put this down here. I'm going to set this right here. I'm going to take that razor blade and scrape it some more because I think there's just a glue line right on here that's causing that. Get that up a little bit more. The whole point is to get that bridge fitting better, so there's no use gluing it on if it doesn't fit. rid of that line let's see if it's any better now and there's a little bit of a rise in the wood right here um, that I'm going to glue down when we get to that point the, the wood is feathered up right here that happened when you when the bridge lifted picked up a grain of wood with it and that's why I don't like to use a spatula when I'm pushing that because you can sure get that under there like this and you can sure take a piece of top off if you're not. Well, you can be as careful as you want. You can't see what's happening under there. So that could be causing some of the problems right there. So I'm going to make sure that's clean underneath. And what that is is run out. And it's actually lifting the top off. Lifting a little piece of spruce off. We're going to glue that down. We're going to put glue underneath there. Put these back on. So we will glue that layer down, put some pressure on it, and check for the fit again. That's a lot better. It's definitely, it's tied out on the wings. Okay, I like that. Getting good? Yeah, that's good. That's nice right there. I'm sure. Yeah, that's right there. That's caused by that wood coming up. Okay, I might end up scraping that just a little bit. Here's your razor. Yeah, there's some finish on top of it. Just a little bit. It's causing it to lift right there. Right there is a little bit of finish I didn't get. Right there. I'm going to keep my chisel. Be able to see what I'm doing. I told you this was hard to film. Okay, I've got my head right down in here on this, and you never get a camera in here. see how that looks
pressure. Oh yeah, stopped it dead. So that was our problem. Yeah, no problem. That looks real good. Okay, so whew, got that on there. Now we're ready to clamp. Um, I always have to turn the guitar this way to clamp. I need it over here on this side. Still on the camera? Not quite. There we go. You know, if you're in my shop, I am shooting between a drill press. Right here, there's a drill press. You can just see the table. My belt sander's over here. And I'm trying really hard to get this angle so that you can see it. Like I said, I need a camera on that wall. Um, not sure what I can do there, except maybe put a wall mount or something on that thing, you know? So, okay. There's your bridge. It looks pretty good. Pull that off. I'm going to razor blade it one more time before we glue. Just barely scraping a little bit right here. This is what it looks like. You'll have just a tiny little bit of dust right there. I'm not really, I'm not taking the depth down or anything. I'm just unoxidizing this surface. We would all like to get things perfect, but the fact of the matter is one quarter of this bridge was glued to finish. So any improvement that we get is a, is a good thing. You know, it'd be nice if it was perfect, but it won't be perfect. It'll be 95%. Which is better than 75% or 65%, you know, that it was before. So it's going to be better. Okay, and I want this razor blade. Just bust it off, and I'm going to do my last scraping of this. Again, just get rid of any oxidization. You got to go with the grain. Grain goes this way, and then it goes that way. So you got to switch grains once you get over here. Going cross grain, but I'm doing it very, very lightly. Okay, glue. I'm using Luthier's Mercantile white glue. It's in this uh, baby bot bottle because I buy it in bulk. Get me a couple clamps out. These clamps, where are we? These clamps. And then I'm going to be using two of these clamps that have the little calls on them that fit the braces. So I'm going to open these up, get them ready to go. Open those. I will need some of these. I've got some just flat ones like this. Pieces of wood. They've got Teflon on the back of them. And then I have some like this that have cork on the bottom. And I use these for the wings. I'm going to need two of those. Right there. Five of them. I like clamps. Okay. Now we want to get some glue under that little flap that's coming up there. So I'm going to start with that. And... I'll get my spatula, put a little glue on it, and we're going to work that up under that flush flap right there. You could glue it beforehand, but glue doesn't stick to glue. Glue doesn't stick to dried glue very well, so we can just do this in one shot right here. Put a little glue under there, make sure it squeezes out. Looks good. Anybody else needing? No. We're good. Okay, where's my bridge? 
Glue on the bridge. My paper towel's still in there to catch any glue droppings. So we got this glue here. Smear it. Just a thin layer of glue. You don't need much because you don't want another stupid glue layer in there. So this is actually too much right now. I'm going to get it smeared over there. And then I'm going to get my paper towel. Wipe it. Put a thin layer. <laughs> Sticky. Tub of water. Okay. Get my bridge pins. These are markers. Make sure I get it back in the right place. I like to use four of them. Just to help anchor it. Make sure I got it. Check it visually. Wiggle it around. Check the fit. See, it shifts a little bit because the pins don't fit exactly. But right there. I like that. So I'm going to take this. Put this one down the middle, and that's going to hold it while I mess with the rest of them. A little piece of wood slides in under here. Okay, that's going to hold it. I don't like using the... Um, fox clamp that holds down here and then you know i like to use clamps i like to clamp i don't like to put pressure on the top and rely on that to glue. i know a lot of people do that's fine i'm just saying i don't like that i'm going to use a clamp this one's going to go on the brace i felt the catch right there Things always want to spin on me. Right there. That feels good and solid. Pressure. Over to here. There you go. Sometimes a mirror inside helps, but I've done this enough times I can get it by feel. I feel pretty good about it now it's clamped on it's not going to go anywhere it's not moving so i'm going to clean this glue up real quick and then pull the pins before they get glued in i don't like the feel of that that's got uh goo going on it I got some glue squeeze out here and I'm gonna get that cleaned up. This is where I use a spatula. Push that around like that. Get it right up on that crack. Get the glue cleaned up. Okay. Pull my pins. Let's see if I can get them with this. Okay, next two clamps. Now I want these right on the corner of that bridge because that's where it tends to come loose when it comes loose. And see, I got some squeeze out, which means I'm pushing it down on it. Even after I just cleaned it up. To me, these, these two are really important for getting a, a bridge on nice and snug. 
Good. Clean that up. And that's how you do it. And now this bridge is now glued to the top. There's no finish in between it. It's got a thin line of glue. You'll pick up a fair amount of better sound here. Like I said in the triage video, uh, my friend David, Dave Scallon, who's the owner of Red Bear Guitar Picks, had a D18GE that we did some trading on, and it had all of my modifications except this one. And after he had it for several years, meaning he had played it for quite a while, um, the bridge started lifting. So he had a local guy do this job, operation, and he reported back to me that it sounded significantly better. Dave's got good ears. I trust him on that more than I trust me. <laughs> clean that up, and I'll clean it up again later when it's done. And there we go. That's how that works. Now, you could take this and you could come back here and you could probe a little bit more. It's nice and tight. That's good. I'm very happy with that. I like that. It's not going in. It's snug. Make sure we've got enough pressure on these. I clamp pretty hard. Okay, we're good. That glue needs to dry for several hours. I pretty much just leave it overnight. Let's back up on the video. I even see my tools coming into play here. <laughs> That's hard to video, you know. I'm sorry if you can't see everything. Um, you got to kind of go we can go with the concept of it. I showed you the top. I showed you the problem. Um, this stuff is not always a cookbook process. It's it's you got to understand the concept. You got to understand what you're trying to solve here, and again, then you go for it and you fix it. So, um, it's hard to videotape that uh, by yourself trying to do the job at the same time. So I did the best I could. Okay, that's the process of it. And that's why we're doing it because there's finish underneath there. There's a problem. Uh, you just take the bridge off to clean the finish off the glue back up. So you know that's all there is to it. But you got to see some of the process, some of the you know, little things here and there. Like make sure you scrape the finish off. Be sure you check it again for to make sure that you actually got a good bridge fit. Um, there's just a lot of little stuff like that sometimes that people skip, and they don't check that fit again. You know, they just oh, put the bridge on and glue it on without checking, make sure it actually indeed did fit. Okay? So I hope you pick up some stuff from that. Uh, we'll string this guitar up tomorrow. It's got to sit for a couple of hours or so, but it's 5 o'clock, I'm done, you know? So I'm going to turn the fan on, get the humidity sw swirling here. This is going to sit overnight, um, and then I'll be back. I'll string it up then. Okay, and then this guitar will be done. All right, one last trick. When I put my glue bottle, I like to take and dip this red cap in water. And then I put it on, and it seems to help keep that glue from drying out. A lot of times it'll dry out and it clog up. And since I've been doing that and pushing water in there, I've been doing that for years, you know. It seems to uh, help a lot. So, all right, it's five o'clock somewhere. It's five o'clock here, actually. <laughs> 